name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Mr. Spirit, let's soften our hearts to welcome God's mercy.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he also not give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the ha right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are beginning the second week of our Lenten journey. So think about what each of us are doing this Lent to bring us closer to God, to add or subtract from who we are and what we do, with the hope to better understand, appreciate, and grow in faith and love of God and all that He has done for and given us out of love. We may have wondered and prayed about and maybe even struggled over what we need to give up or add to our lives during Lent to bring us closer to God. As Father Woody said last week, we need to feed the angel and starve the beast. As we control the beast, as we give up food or things such as media that seems to dominate our lives. And we've given up actions or attitudes that make us feel too focused on ourselves and less on God. And conversely, we welcome and feed the angel. As we've hopefully added to our conversation with God in pr our prayers, and the giving of ourselves that boosts our relationship with Him. And now looking at our readings for this second Sunday of Lent, they present a suggestion we probably haven't thought of as into what to give up. How about giving up your firstborn child? Or any child for that matter. The first reading from the book of Genesis 
has brought many questions to mind for me throughout my life as a boy, as I grew into a young man, and even more so as God gave me the gift of becoming a father. I look at this passage from Genesis and try to put myself in Abraham's sandals, how he waited so long to be blessed in becoming a parent, and then to be asked to give up this precious gift of a child, and not only give up his son, but to be the cause of his son's demise. What was God expecting Abraham to do? And as horrible and unthinkable as this was, Abraham was to do this after God had promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and at such an advanced age. But now his first child, Isaac, was to be killed by Abraham's own hand. We can only imagine Abraham's anguish as he resigned himself to this most difficult task out of obedience to God. And then just as he is about to kill Isaac, he is told not to harm him. What was his reaction? Relief? Surprise? Shock? How about, you've got to be kidding me. Look at what you put me through, and my son through. Could Isaac ever look at his father again without thinking about his own dad, what his own dad almost did to him? These responses would have been appropriate and human reactions. But Abraham had God's promise, and so he chose to trust. And Isaac was allowed to live. And people as numerous as the stars were able to, to say they descended from Abraham. What have I done as a dad to put my own sons in the harm's way? Thankfully, I have not been placed in the same situation Abraham had with his son Isaac. But, as with, as, but with my sons, I watch them be born and grow into men that they are today. As life opened them up to so many ways, it stretched them and put them in positions to make difficult and complicated decisions. And I supported them as they chose to embark on endeavors that had the potential to be risky and perhaps even harm them. Yet, what was the constant that I had in all these joys, trials, and challenges of being a dad? Trust and faith in God, and the power of prayer, just like Abraham. I may not have been able to present, prevent my sons from enduring difficult times, but God gave them strength to endure and even excel as I kept them and continue to keep them in prayer. And now look at what God has done for each of us. He has brought us into existence, loved us from our conception and even before, and given us strength and the gifts to make it through whatever we encounter in our lives, both the positive and negative, especially when we look to Him for our strength and support. For as St. Francis de Sales prayed, God will either shield you from suffering or will give you unfailing strength to bear it. So what is God trying to teach us through all this? We could parallel Abraham's unthinkable task of giving up his son, which God, which, with God doing exactly the same thing by giving his own beloved son, Jesus. God, in his infinite love for us all, has chosen his own son to be our sacrifice. Unlike Abraham, in which God provided a ram to take Isaac's place on his sacrifice, God did not do so for his son, Jesus. As we read in the letter to the Romans, St. Paul makes it apparent that nothing was withheld from his love for us, as he would not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. God did not withdraw the horrible experience of being scourged and crucified, not to mention the abandonment of, by most of Jesus' followers when it became difficult. This is what Lent, and our entire faith, is all about. For us to come to grips with the most important truth and gift in our lives, that God loves us without reservation, for which he proved even as he spoke, this is my beloved son, God also gave Jesus up to suffer and die to be our Savior. Lent is a time of turning towards God, maybe even returning to God for some, so for some of us. And the most important aspect is that God is always willing to welcome us in our turning and our returning. May we in this time of Lent learn to answer the following questions. What are we holding back from God? 
Where in our lives do we fail to trust Him? How can we prove to ourselves that God is always faithful in His Word? And to help guide your answers, let me quote once more from St. Francis de Sales. The same loving God who cares for you today will care for you tomorrow and every day. Now let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us saying for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We entrust all of our needs and all the deep desires of our hearts to the Lord in prayer. That the good work God has begun within us and among us this Lent might bear fruit for the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor receive a just share of the good things of this earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That our catechumens and all who prepare for the Easter sacraments may find themselves more and more deeply at home in our community of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That the sick and those who take care of them may find comfort, strength, and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those who have died, especially Bob Valley, may rest forever in joy beyond all measure or imagining. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kind and compassionate God, complete the good work you have begun among us and in us. Uh, draw us closer to you and closer to each other in and through your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told his, the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when the supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, and Eusebio, and Daniel, our bishops, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's come. 
command and form and by divine teaching, we get to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and to graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he that he should enter Lord. under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Starting on Tuesday, March 9th, we will be hosting an online Lenten retreat for adults and young adults from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. for three weeks, weeks in a row to help the parish prepare for Holy Week and Easter. Contact Matt or Sean in the parish office for more information. Please join us for a COVID-19 update and panel discussion during our regular coffee and donut virtual hour tomorrow at noon. 
Dr. David Karsten will provide a brief summary of the most current information on the state of the pandemic and vaccine. And Katie Arkush, acting prin principal within the Vancouver Public Schools, will talk about plans related to COVID-19 within the school district. Father Woody and our deacons will join them in brainstorming the best ways we can all maintain our physical, spiritual, and emotional health during these trying times. The link to enter the Zoom discussion can be found on the coffee and donuts portion of our website. Check our parish website for a link to our parish Linton resource pages. On it we find you, we have family activities, reflections for adults, stations of the cross, and Friday evening prayer. The Lord be with you and with your yes, spirit. Amen. Bless your faithful, we pray, O oh Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is in the go in peace, giving glory to God by loving and serving each other. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.